Um, I'm glad to see everyone here. It's, it's a great opportunity to, to chat with you and to chat among us about, uh, about uh, manipulatives and the workshop that was given two weeks ago with, uh, with Micheline. So thanks to Micheline for co-hosting with me. Thanks to Julie for um, preparing the digital part of the, this, uh, this uh, focus group. Thanks for Martin for being that uh, reliable resource when we need for math. That being said, uh, I can share my screen so that we can see the small agenda that we have. Again, we decided to just put a small agenda together so that we have, uh, in case we don't have topics to talk about. And uh, Jessica, feel free to, to, to jump in anytime you, you want or any of the consultants that are here. Uh, we were thinking of talking about hands-on and manipulatives, like uh, uh, following Micheline's workshop two weeks ago, she left us with a bit of a homework saying, uh, if you go back in your class, uh, if you try anything, uh, you can come in and report to this focus group uh, so we can exchange and talk about it. Uh, again, as a second point, we were talking about shared practices, like uh, what do you already do in your classes uh, that that seems to work or doesn't work or how you 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 handle it um, and uh, thirdly we'll talk about resources actually there were resources that were presented it was just it's just a reminder of what's available uh, q and a's if you have any questions and uh, and to finish off with if there's any uh, any uh, topics you would like to talk about in future workshops it could just be focus groups too doesn't have to be anything structured, but if you wanted to address any topics related to math uh, with um, in our um, indigenous classes, uh, that would be a good place to make your suggestions for later on. That's it. So here we are at our first topic, uh, hands-on and manipulatives um, in your class and did you did you try anything or even for teachers that used to teach did you try anything uh, using manipulatives and hands-on uh, did it work if it didn't work uh, what could you do differently so the floor is open <laughs> uh, just just a little question jessica just remind me are you are you in virtual all the time or do you do uh, virtual and and online virtual all the time oh, all the time huh? yeah okay and not to i feel like i'm going to disappoint you guys <laughs> I, I am not i'm not i don't actually teach at um sec one two three i'm more sec five to six and so a lot of manipulative that michelin presented i uh, for most of them i was aware of of it um, but it is not as useful to my students. It sometimes is useful. I sometimes I'll pass it along to students with the little kids, like uh, the you not know, reading the clock face uh, stuff online, stuff like that. Uh, so a lot of I am aware of a lot of online manipulative. Um, I've tried Jamboard. Uh, like I tried different uh, interactive whiteboard. Um, I'm mostly using Jamboard, the Zoom whiteboard, and when I go into geometry, the Microsoft whiteboard, because mm -hmm. it allowed me to have a ruler <laughs> and draw a straight line. Hey, hey. <laughs> uh, but, and also because I'm a more one on one type of situation as well. Um, with ongoing enrollment and uh, mixed classes in mixed levels in my class, I usually teach one on one. Wow. Uh, a lot of my students, like I, I, I introduced graspable math to one of my students before the workshop. Uh, she liked it, and then I introduced it to a couple more students. I think they like it because it record everything they did, they did for them. They really liked how it is presented. 
uh, and actually I attended the graspable math did you training I, I yeah they really hide their training like uh, information in the corner of their website but I was able to and there was like eight people in total during the training and there's like uh, three presenters <laughs> So, there, so we were able to ask all the questions like, how do you do this? How do you do that? How do I make it look like this? And, but it has a lot of limitation when it comes to fractions. Mm -hmm. It does fraction a little bit too perfectly. Okay. Yeah, but they, they are aware of, of it. But that being said, I think all my, the student who tried it, they liked it for different purposes. And I'm mostly using it as a way for them to explore algebra, because a lot of my students they have low, they they are really afraid of math, and they are afraid to try things, and they just want to do what's right, right? Then, because I actually type out all the exercise, example and exercise that I have for. Off from my course pack onto a canvas and I save it so I can share it with them. So they can just explore. And I told them that, hey, if it goes into the same answer, then that is another method that works because the algebra, there's really a lot of flexibility. But if they see something that they used to that, if they see something that doesn't match what I wrote on the board, for example, they automatically think it's wrong. Mm -hmm. But I hope to give at least one of my students uh, really a safe space for him to try it out to see, okay, if that worked too, then that's okay. Yeah. No, I, I love what you're saying that, that uh, the, the fact that you, I had the same problems with my classes when, when I had one solution on the board and I tell them try everybody wants to redo the same solution exactly in different problems. And then, you know what? I, I start doing it differently. I start saying, okay, this is one solution. You go and put yours on the board. Everybody puts theirs on the board and then we look together because if you start teaching, then they're gonna, they're gonna right away copy exactly what you wrote, you know? And, and they're not gonna even attempt trying anything else. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but but graspable math is good for that. Graspable math is good for that because when you click, let's say you're doing an operation exactly like you said, Jessica, you, you click, it keeps all these steps that you did for you. So even if you don't realize all the steps, it's there, it's displayed for you. So it's it's actually really interesting when they go back and they look at what they did. And sometimes the thing is when you have one-on-one, -on -one, it's great, but sometimes you just need a couple more students so they can compare each other's work because they won't take your word for it, you know, most of the time. I know, I know the idea of having students working with each other. Mm -hmm. Um, I always try to do that. They are, well, most of us students are very resistant to the idea. They, even though they know each other, right? Because I teach on the reserve, they all know each other. <laughs> and they all want to, like, don't want to have anything to do with each other's work. Yeah. yeah. So uh, at this point, uh, just because I'm trying to have them do almost anything, mm -hmm. Because sometimes emotional roller coaster, you have good day, bad days. Mm -hmm. So at the mo at this moment, I'm not pushing for any collaborative efforts at this moment, just because I, I try, I try, and try, and then basically I give up. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I you know what? Maybe an idea for that. If if they don't want to collaborate, and I had a problem with that in my class too. The, the the nicest way, like I said, maybe just as an idea, is like to get them to write it. And I know maybe some, I'm not sure if they would like to post it, like to put it on the board. Yeah, I try, I try that. I try to have them each have like a different page on a Jamboard so they can draw what they feel. Yeah. Like, or maybe talk about the movie they saw this week or anything and everything. Or I was saying like, if you, if you find a way to solve math that you didn't think of before, you can put that on too. Yeah. Of all my students, only one does anything. Yeah. 
Well, did you did you try to maybe give them the answer to the problem and say, okay, you want the answer? I give you the answer. Now, can you tell me how we get from this question to the answer as an idea? Uh, uh, I mean, on the graspable map? No, even, even like in any problem, like sometimes, like you said, they want the right answer all the time. So if we release them from actually looking for it and just uh, give it no, to they, them. No, they do have the answer because uh, most of my students are working off Oh, uh, okay. Uh, my, my, my course, and also, because remember I told you I, I record all my lesson in yes. videos? Yes, yes. So yes. the next video, there's the, answer, the answers. Yeah, yeah. That's sometimes... Uh, if if we don't give them answers, they, they, they're not happy. Yeah. Give them happy. If you give them the answer, they're not happy. So sometimes it's a, it's a balance. You're right. I give You're them right. the answer for all the exercise, mm -hmm. but not the assignments. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So they have to come back and talk to you about it. Uh, they have to go and check with you. Is that they it? They have to show me their, their work. Uh, right now I have, uh, I'm using Facebook Messenger, something that uh, they are all very comfortable with. <laughs> Is that mm -hmm. me? Because uh, then they can just use their phone, take a picture, send it by Messenger. Yeah. Yeah. The just to just to 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 give you a little idea i use the 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 app remind do what it's called remind remind okay that remind it's like almost like a messenger system where they take pictures they can do everything and it's uh it's like it's only your class you can put like only your class in it you know and and it's, it's 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 instantaneous, and you don't have to give like your personal information, nothing. So the class will be just through email. So if you want, you could try that. It worked nicely in my class. Okay, I'll check it out. Yeah. yeah. It, no, uh, like for me, I I, I just kind of created a page. So, but yeah, the, the, my student cannot really talk to each other. But for me, I didn't. I don't really have the problem with that because, like I say, they know each other, so they probably have each other on the Facebook. <laughs> So uh, my, my school is a little bit different um, where all my students know each other. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah it. And it's also much, it's much smaller than some of the other bigger uh, yeah. centers. So really they all know each other. They all know their students, their, their, their teachers. And I think sometimes like I, I know Remind, I know a lot of teachers who use it and it, it's really helpful when they have a lot of students so they can just kind of blast things out. Yeah. But sometimes, especially now I find uh, we're doing so many things with so many different apps and everything, you know, online, we're using Zoom and Google Classroom and then to have something else that we have to download and check and, and mm -hmm. it's all uh, streamlined. I think sometimes that's the easiest, right? Like Jessica said, uh, you know, they all have it already. They're all on Facebook anyway, so. And actually, strangely, I find that if I ever send a, a general email to a, a group of students, uh, very few people ever respond. But if I take the time, unfortunately, to send an individual message of checking in, uh -huh. then my response rate is much higher. I find that the same thing for me. Like if I get a message from a colleague directly to me, I respond quicker than if it's kind of like a uh, information for, you know, like, like that I, that's a form email. Do you know what it, because it's that relationship. I think it's, it's, <laughs> It's, it, it, I, I think that's what it is. It's the relationship. It's, it's feeling like I'm talking to somebody and not that this person is talking to a whole bunch of people. Uh, uh, a solution could be to use something like, uh, for example, MailChimp, where you can put the name of everyone in it and have the same message for all that you write like if you were talking to only one person and then you send it by there by clicking on the name uh, in the, 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 in the MailChimp, everyone will receive it with your uh, email address, but with their own name everywhere in the, the, the email. So that could be a way to, uh, to, to, to have more time <laughs> <laughs> the student you... thinking is the individual message. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah. I guess that that would work if you're teaching like one. If you have the same message for everyone. Yeah. No. But, but I usually take the time to 
because people were saying, oh, I got a new dog or my grandparent exactly. went down yeah. was sick. So I try to um, make it personal. So they know the human being they're talking to versus something else. But um, but at that, at that, for that, I find the message system to be very useful because all the message from that student are grouped into one thing. So I don't have to go look for emails. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and and I like what you're saying. It, it's not it they know it's a human being that's talking to them. It's not just a, you know, like they, they feel like they're involved in a conversation and you make it personal. That's actually Tracy, eh? you're working working hard on this, the connection and the to keep it going. And uh, this is a great, great example of how it's done. Yeah. Yeah, I think especially right now, people need to feel like they're they're connected to a person you know we need we need that hi woody hi yeah. that's fun. sorry for joining late yeah i mean um on that note actually that's a an interesting thing because i find that um during this time of covid and isolation that that you know interaction and jessica mentioned like hey what about a good movie and you know that personal uh touch it's like it's almost, you know, therapy and it's, uh, it's good for actually even us, you know, I mean, I find the, the back and forth and the, um, it's just really important to, to build that connection. And I find that, I mean, for me, I'm, I'm teaching, <clears throat> I'm teaching the lower math, the basic uh, bed mass and, 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 and the entry level SSET math is primarily what I'm teaching. I mean, I can teach the higher, uh, levels as well. Uh, if we had an advanced calculus class, I could probably teach that too. But the thing is, what what we're doing right now is uh, establishing that contact. And I find for I've just recently onboarded about three or four different <clears throat> students, and I find that initial contact and um, that human interaction is the most important thing. But I'd be I'd be interested in knowing uh, like. You mentioned this remind um is there is there an app like i don't uh, usually what i do is i just make assignments and then i just follow up on how they're progressing and i have them submit it and i correct and i find with math math is one where i think you know assignment and following up and reviewing with them recently what i've been doing is having them just have send pictures of what of of their work because initially I was having them um, submit the file back, you know, um, electronically and, and having to write out their work electronically uh, was a lot more difficult. But recently I've found just say, hey, just take a picture of what you just did, send it to me and I'll call you back and we'll review it together. So I find that just, I recently tried that with a few students and I found that 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 works, um, that's been working fairly well. And it, the fact that they, they're getting that instant feedback of, oh, okay, I uh, did it right. And, you know, really being very, very encouraging. Uh, I find that it seems to work fairly well. But like you mentioned, Rewind, I, I was <clears throat> had a question with regards to, um, is there a way uh, that we can make the screen interactive for both, for both sides? And is there is there a screen that you can just write on, like like I could just write, um, you know, handwrite, uh, like it, like it was a blackboard for both people. What's the best um, What's the best uh, medium for that? Does anyone have any comments on that? Um, sorry. Um, I know I know from my class when I taught uh, taught lower math and science. Well, science I taught science and I taught lower math. I used Remind as a daily communication method because you know sometimes it just wanted to reach you at any time and yep. it is only your class so it was very easy and also sometimes they'll send me a problem take a picture and send it to me and they want instant response so we used the remind because i had a bigger group um a nice tool that i use which also like um, does follow up exactly like you're saying it's the seesaw i don't know if you had a chance to look at that no never seen that uh how do you spell it? Seesaw S. Yeah, I put it in the yeah, I put it in the chat. Yeah. 
-hmm. And what Seesaw does is uh, the minute they log on it, it creates almost for uh, their own file. So you could put all the questions there and they have many, many ways of solving on that app and it saves their work and it could be almost like an instantaneous back and forth with you and you could see who did what and, and there's a follow up and they could back and forth feedback as long as you want. Wow. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, it's that in Google Classroom as well, right? Like it's very similar to the feed in Google Classroom, which mm -hmm. uh, you're already using, Woody. And I think because you wanted something that you could actually write on as a whiteboard, you can import a Jamboard, you can create a Jamboard directly in Google Classroom, which is and, something Jessica's using already, I think. And there's also a class kit that could be uh, helpful for that. Uh, but they're already using Google Classroom in, in uh -huh. their teaching. Okay, so, so instead of like adding extra apps onto things, right. probably just looking at what integrates. Yeah. Well, already. yeah, I'd, I'd really uh, be interested in knowing a little bit more of how to use that Jamboard because I really, I don't, I mean, yes, for sure we're on that Google Classroom. So it makes sense to use what what we have the, the people on already. And, uh, but these are other good suggestions. So maybe I could, uh, Maybe you could um, maybe we'll follow up with you uh, later to find out how to use Jamboard. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you, if I could share the screen, I could show you what Seesaw looked like just out of curiosity. Okay. Yeah, sure. You know, um, let me hold on, share it with you. So, because again, we, we worked on, uh, well, you're, you're absolutely, Tracy's absolutely right. You don't want to add, if you could use already what's there, I think personally, it's like amazing. So this is this is what it would look like here. For example, you have the journal. I have here all my students, for example. This is my older class. And if you pick any of them, uh, you, you'll notice here, um, this is the person and it's in response to a, a, re a review question. So if you click over here, this is the class, all of the class. And this is the question that you send them and you know who submitted and who didn't submit it. And some people like to use like, let's say, um, like just a, a, like a whiteboard where they could work with and yeah. others, they just take a picture, but yeah. each kid, each kid, well, each student, I'm sorry, each adult has their own, uh, like their own file. They don't see e uh, each other's work. They see okay, only their good. work, you yeah. know? And of course, like in this case, you have like, you have your, your setup of questions and then again, then from there, they, this is what you design and they'll get it individually and they'll have their work displayed in the bottom. So, uh, oh yeah, cool. Yeah. That so this awesome. is this, that's why we, we went with it. So let's say I'll show you like what an activity looked like. Like if I take, uh, let's say this one over here and I want to add respond. So let's say I'm a sample student here. You see, you have the instruction and this is what your screen would look like. So you could type, you could orally, um, you could orally explain, you could take a picture, you could uh, put it, put in a video. And then the bottom here, you could use a pencil, crayon, whatever, highlighter, whatever. So there's many way of actually returning an answer, you know? So mm -hmm. that, that's why I thought these are, are fun. And if you see on the side over here, you have all your questions on the site. So you could go back and forth to whatever questions you want to wow. play. Awesome. And what's nice is you could have it saved as a draft and you submit it. And once you submit it, you know, the teacher receives it on their end. They could put feedback right. and sends it back. And they get noticed that they could take a look and they'll see the handwriting of the teachers on it. Oh, okay. This is what I thought was super, super nice. cool. Like, um, I don't know if I have here something that I, hold on, archives, let me see. I have like something like this, like, uh, hold on, uh, scheduled inbox. I have like stuff that I didn't even check, but for example if i pick any student like notice over here they're like i was asking them how would you use uh, the the calculator because they wanted a specific function oh, i yeah. added i added on it like okay you take this button and you do uh, this yeah. and you do that so this is one this is uh, two this is three so i'm able to do that with the students like yeah. notice over here this person here gave me um give me their own solutions then i could go enter their solutions here um and I could actually work on it. Okay. I could pass the, I could pass a comment in the bottom, or I could literally take my pen and go around and say, nice. "Okay, this is wrong. This is right." Yeah. So right. Wow. Okay. That's awesome. That's 
that, right. that's and it's all uh it's all in their like it's it's per student they have their own like uh, how do you say um their follow-up so all the questions they have it there from the beginning to the end with their own solution with their own okay. feedback so when they yeah. go back and review they have the whole package so there's a history okay a history. Yeah. no yeah. like tracy uh the jam board on yeah. classroom is it this sophisticated or is this a lot more functional um well you can make it the work the way that you want that you want it to work right like with jamboard you can do the same thing where it's, oh, it's right. just like any type of um app that you might integrate into your classroom you can create one that everyone can see and edit or you can create multiple copies of the same thing so that students can not see each other's work right, right. necessarily mm -hmm. and and then it becomes a you know it's a file already in the google drive if that's what you're already using with your students then you have that kind of constant like you're always gathering um, okay. um oh, okay. data like you have that collection of 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 work of student work right in your google drive okay they both have i think they both have their their they're both useful you know like they're both they can both act as kind of a student portfolio and it's just if you're already using uh, google classroom and you want to just kind of not have to add something else for the student because yeah. now the students are going to need another another login and you know like they're going to it's, it's, okay. it's another app to add to them so yeah, if you yeah. wanted to keep things just yeah keep it simple right keep it simple <clears throat> i'd probably right. go more towards let, let's see what you can already do within your google classroom and your drive yeah. but if you wanted to add something else then we could take a look at seesaw and how that might work yeah that's no that's really they're really uh, good uh good tools we'll try and start using them sounds good thank you michelin uh, thank you tracy and if i can if i may uh, another um things is that when i was teaching i was teaching french but anyway i used to uh work with uh screenomatic or screencastify where i could like literally uh do my correction and be um, and be record by when I was doing it. So uh, and after that, uh, I was just like sharing it with the students. And mostly, what the comments were, it was that the students feel confident to understand more how it works because it was almost like if I were like just beside him doing the correction just like if I was in the class with him. So that could be also another way to uh, to do so. What what was that way? Sorry, I didn't catch it. I was, I was recording myself during oh. the time I was doing my correction. So um, oh. with uh, oh, okay. Screencastify or Screenomatic, there's a lot of, uh, you can find on the, the web. So the student was able to see every step of my correction. I was also telling him what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, somehow the students were uh, very pleased with that because they, they had the opportunity to go back to the correction I've made before. And if they um, had like, uh, they didn't, um, they didn't uh, remember something, they would just watch it again, you know? So they would say, right. oh yeah, for that work, I have to do that, what she explained to me in that other uh, work I've made before. Okay. So that could be something too. And, and for the relationship too, it's great because um, if you, uh, for instance, uh, end your, um, <clears throat> your, your uh, well, yourself exactly. in the, the recording, then mm -hmm. the, the student will see you and it's almost like you 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 were there you know yeah <clears throat> do, do they have a, a husband and a wife option where <laughs> 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 but yeah but definitely those are great tools and i see i see jessica and and michelin in the in the chat they've commented for sure and they've sent the links for for oral like for retro action, it's it, it is great. The student feels like you're right there with them. Yeah, that's a great tool. Yeah, Woody, just so you know, there, there are a lot of options like Loom, Screencastify that will record whatever you have on your on your screen. 
So you can do the questions and they can also have you as appearing as a video in a bubble or in the little square. But I find that if you don't have, if you're trying to do math, for example, yeah, uh, and you don't have a touch screen mm -hmm. to be able to write, then it's literally hell on earth. Try yeah, to write. Hard. Well, uh, yeah, try it, try it with computers too. I mean, I, it's just as like like I teach computers as well, and that and for sure, if I had if I were able to see their screen, I know there's stuff to do, but I haven't been using those type of things. But I know you can share screen options. You know that would have that would really help, you know, like you see, hey, you know, look in the top right corner, you should see a little like on there, la la la. Um, I, I don't know if you have any share screen um, uh, suggestions. Um, I mean, share, share screen option is available in Zoom. Uh, you yeah. as a host can share screen, they as a participant can share screen if you allow them, this is a setting in Zoom. And okay. I think they recently add shared screen options in um, in Google Meet as well. In Meet? Oh, yeah, they have that in Google um, Meet? I think I saw a news yeah. report about that. I'm not yeah, using they, they Meet, do. so I'm not. They do? I'm not 100%. Yeah. And, and there might be a, because I posted a quick present, like a link to a presentation on Google Classroom, Google Meet, Google Jamboard stuff. Uh, there was a, training recently on Google and Moodles and uh, Microsoft. So I posted the Google parts in the uh, workspace. Okay. Uh, uh, but if you're using like, even I think I saw share screen in a lot of Messenger app as well, depending on what you're using with your students. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly it's been just phone, you know, phone, phone on phone in and we'll have the same material. So we'll we review the material. Uh, I do French as well. So I find, and it's, it, uh, a lot of my students are really low level. So I find the only way is to, is to go, you know, by phone and review things and pronounce and have them repeat back. And, you know, uh, I try to, I try to build in um, uh, a component of everyday conversation, going to the store, asking, you know, saying hello, you know, like conversational type uh, French. I try to emphasize that just so that at least they're functional when they go into a dépanneur and they're looking for uh, something. I think the, the immersive reader function in OneNote might help you with French because there's a setting that will automatically like highlight nouns and verbs and read it out loud for you, put, separating the syllables and all that automatically. So it's a setting. So you type in the, the paragraph and okay. then depending on what they need, they can, you can guide them through the setting on sub, su, uh, separating the word into syllables. So okay. for pronunciations, um, mm -hmm. highlighting the nouns and the, uh, the verbs and or, and also there's an immersive reader function. So you can read it. And then when they working on their own, they can have the computer read it as well. And it's not as horrible as it used to be. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So, but, and that, um, we because we don't have Microsoft Office, but that is available through any Microsoft email. Uh, what about read and write, Jessica? Did you try read and write? I tried read and write, but the thing is, I, um, as a teacher, I, I only get one free account and that's it. And then I, uh, uh, I like free. <laughs> <laughs> so, and a lot of students, uh, like I, I don't teach language, so that I'm aware of the uh, different apps, but I didn't have to use it very often. Mm -hmm. um, but I found the once I started using OneNote, I cannot then go back to read and write anymore. Yeah, but I know why am I saying this is just because read and write is in Google Suite. It's easy. You could it's yeah. an extension. It's a Chrome extension. But unfortunately, our school board doesn't have that. Oh, okay, I see. So that's why eventually after I, I actually got a free te teacher account, I tried it uh, briefly, but then because I couldn't get my student an account and uh, they're like, I gave up. Yeah. Um, also, I just wanted to add, I've been talking a lot with, uh, with Tanu and Diane just about 
some of the things that maybe we need because now that that you especially in Ganawage you're all virtual you know like you're pretty much 100% virtual and that um you know if there are materials that you need in order to be able to teach this way like we need to talk about it let you know let Karina know let me know because then I can work on it from the other end you know uh, when, when someone hears a message from multiple angles sometimes the message gets through uh, I think faster. I'm too adaptable. Too adaptable. I'm too adaptable. I but, I but now that we're at version. home, yeah. Now that we're at home, though, like certain things, like like you had mentioned earlier, Jessica, about how frustrating it is to work on something like Jamboard or any other whiteboard if what you have is a if you're doing it with a computer mouse or a touchpad as opposed to a touch screen. And I so, mentioned it, but it didn't it never got anywhere. Yeah, but we could I could bring it up again like like you know like let's let's because we want to make sure that that you're able to do your jobs it's stressful enough to like this whole pandemic and having to change how we're teaching that we want to make sure that you have access to the tools that you need in order to be able to do it so if you're going to be you know presenting things and you want to be able to kind of write on a whiteboard i mean you could also always get a whiteboard and, and write you know from your like yeah but that wouldn't work when i have a broken camera <laughs> Yes, doesn't work when you have a broken camera. But actually, but, but to use something like Jamboard to use as a whiteboard, um, if if you like, you're right. If you don't have either a stylus or just a tablet or a phone that you could, you know, you could write directly on, then it's incredibly frustrating for you and the students. So, like, there'd be probably be a good idea to to uh, put together again, like the tool, like a list of the tools that you need in order to make your lives easier and to and to be more effective teachers and that way not that you're not effective teachers now but we're, we're working in a, in a whole different you can't just walk up to the board and write on the board you know we need to be able to do something similar to that online so if you need touch screen things like we could start looking at how do we get those and i know well, this I... is like we're in a math focus group but i think this is part of it as well it's making sure that we have the tools like for the longest time I was working just on my laptop and I was kind of going nuts having like, like I'd be in a Zoom meeting, but I'm also working within Google Docs or whatever. And so I solved it by, I mean, personally, I bought myself a new television and I have my old TV now as a monitor on my desk. So I'm, yeah, me I'm, too. I have a second I'm, monitor. Yeah, you know, so, so that, but just that having a second monitor helped a lot. So yeah. if you're teaching from home and like, I'm, I'm sure that there is there are usually monitors hanging around the school building or something. Do you know what I mean? Like these old ugly monitors or something. Who cares how ugly they are? As long as it's a screen that you could that you could extend your um, your own screen to. So there's I think that if if maybe like we outside of this could put together kind of a list of essentials to make our lives as math teachers or or language teachers or whatever. Um, easier, more effective, less stressful, etc. And then, and then we can kind of put that into Karina. And then I'll make sure, like, I'll say, "Hey, Karina, do you guys have any needs in terms of hardware, etc.?" And and see how we at the school council can help out because I I think that's really important and that helps with like you know we're giving out all these ideas like yeah let's use Jamboard as a touch as a as a whiteboard but if you don't have a touch screen then it's useless it's 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 not as helpful. Just to keep in mind, also sometimes when you want to give an activity to the students, being math or language, you want to test it in different settings because the, stu the students don't necessarily all have the same tools, right? I remember, like, for example, when I used to do all these activities in math, when you look at your phone, it looks very different than your iPad. It looks very different than your computer. So having these tools around sometimes it's just when you want to do something, you could have it displayed on all of them and see do, do do they see what you see or you what you want them to do and i know a lot of my students back then they only worked with their phone for math right and okay. imagine where you have to do all kind of these manipulation on a small screen they managed they managed but that's all they had so i had to make sure that my text was very small i had to make sure that the point was a lot more you know you have to adapt to the needs of your kids, your students, really, at the end of the day. Right. You know? right. so. Yeah, I find that like, taking pictures of their work and then sending it right back and then getting it as a text and then reviewing it with them on the phone. Uh, I've just been just recently doing that in the last couple of weeks. And it, I find that, like you say, using the tools that you have 
and uh, the interactive aspect of it, uh, you know, and, and, uh, mm -hmm. that that's worked well in the last little bit. But like you say you got to do use the tools you have. You know, yeah. good point. Yeah, and it, it's good for retention too. You want the kids to stay. Like I mean, I had like I had a group. I remember I had a very very tough group in in, in retention because they were not motivated and all of that stuff. So taking, like you said, take that five minutes to have that conversation. How are you? Like Jessica used to send all these emails. Oh, how's your cat today? How's your grandma there? You know, you have to keep up with everyone's profile and their interest on top of what, you know, you want them to teach. But if you didn't do those conversations, they wouldn't show up the next day, right? Yeah. So, so yeah, there's a lot of things to juggle. I get it. <laughs> so, um, you know, because we can't underestimate the value that we have on a one-on-one -on -one basis and it's time for them and mm -hmm. i find for me too because i'm isolated too so you know the fact that you're you have that daily interaction it's sort of it's like a life raft it's something that carries you through and that you know that daily contact uh, or every every few days you know i i finding that you know they're they're doing a lot of studies obviously there things are coming out that uh, there's a lot of you know, lack of motivation, a lot of students are losing ground during this time. And, and we can't underestimate that human interaction mm -hmm. aspect, you know, that could be helping them. You know? Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. Just that idea that, you know, it's like, it's, it's not all bad. The fact that we are working from home and that we are, um, needing to communicate you know through technology for most of the, like some of the like the, the way that you know people are sending you um uh, sending you their their problems like just by you know like with an image on their phone like they're just taking a phone sending it to you and then you can immediately respond directly to them mm -hmm. you know it's so there it's i think some of it some of these kinds of um the, the ways that we're interacting i think it, it if everything were like tomorrow, we could all go back into this, the center. I think some of the things might be useful to keep because even if, um, you know, even if we're all back together in the centers and we're all, uh, everything's everything's fine, everything's, uh, you know, safe and whatever, but for some people, they're too shy maybe to ask that question in front of everybody else. And so to be able to have that kind of mechanism where, oh, here, can I just take a picture and send it to you? You know, so I think I'm hoping that's that some of these the strategies that we use that we can kind of keep going and be able to to change things. I, I think even in terms of evaluations and things like that, like they're even looking at the uh, you know higher education levels. How are we going to change some of the evaluations? That might be an impact of the pandemic, which would be amazing, right? <laughs> if we could change how we evaluate, that's a whole other question. <laughs> But that could be a, an amazing impact. So I think some of the you know the impact of the pandemic, you don't always want to just hope everything goes back to the way it was. I'm not sure how great the way things were necessarily. Yeah. It's my my little editorial sur la pandémie. <laughs> but I I totally agree with you, Tracy, and 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 I I I agree with uh, the spontaneously this la spontanéité. I don't know how to say it in English. It doesn't matter. There you go. Yeah, um, yeah the texting the and, and we're communicating with them with the way they communicate among them. So, I mean, I think it's, 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 there's going to be some positive that come out of this, uh, definitely. And then it's going to be to juggle and to, to find the right balance between before and now. Yeah, definitely. I see the time is running by, and um, I maybe I would share just one uh, one last slide, on which there's some links to to tools that were given last uh, when uh, Micheline did her workshop, which is a it's called a, a resource toolbox. Let me share my screen. <coughs> there it is. And um, when Micheline did the, the presentation two weeks ago, she had gathered some activities. Go, now I'm going back to this, I mean, the theme. We were talking about the workshop from um, that, that Micheline did on hands-on and manipulatives. But going back to this 
maybe you want to, if you, if you didn't have a chance to look at it yet, there's lots of activities too that, I mean, once we're in the center can be used, but there's also some virtual ones that could be used as well. I don't know if, if I open it up, Michten, do you want to talk about it a little bit? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. And, yeah. and so the idea behind this, the way I, I, I put it, and thanks to actually lots of ideas people uh, kind of gave me. Um, so taking a look at it is using manipulative, especially for, for the lower levels, because they hate math and because they're so kind of programmed in a way that they walk into a classroom, it's a paper and a pen and a calculator, and we do things and I don't get it. And it's the same thing over and over. I, I really appreciated the thought of like teaching math in a game format and, and to throw them off that you're, you, there's a purpose to this, even though it seems like it's a game. So like, this is the ideas that I came. So in case you're in class, but you could do this virtually also. Um, the whole idea here is if you play a game, if you play a game of, of, of cards or Uno or whatever you, you choose and you give them the activity and saying, okay, I have three sets of hands and there's a joker in each sets of hands and ask them for the value of the joker, I promise you all your students will get it. And when you bring this up and say, well, okay, let's have a discussion. How come the same virtual, like the same joker has many different values and bring it to, 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 to for them to explain it. Well, then the, the joker takes different plays, therefore it takes different numerical values and, and to transfer that into the, 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 um, the algebra and the idea of an X. So by connecting it to something that they know through like just something like a regular thing. Now the, the abstract component becomes more real. You know what I mean? Yep. So this is this is the idea. Notice over here, like I I, I brought the idea also to progressively um, to progressively build stuff. Like for example, like terms. What is a like term? Let's play a game. You have all these cards. Uh, the only rule is same variable, same exponent, right? So it's a matching game. So even though I have a 7C and a 7C, you start with something really obvious because we want to mechanically put games that they're going to actually succeed. So this is how you build confidence in this. So you give them something really, really easy where you apply the rules to, and then eventually you start changing them, giving them stuff more complex and say, okay, well, remember the game that we played before? Same rules, like same variable, same exponent. Now let's see how would that apply here. So they experience success. Now I'm adding the component that it doesn't matter the coefficient. What matters is the variable and the exponent. So they progressively are moving up in difficulty. Okay. Um, also the idea of, of using, um, I don't know why everything is moved around, but uh, the idea of moving also using uh, how to write equations, for example. Okay, so you start off, let's say, with cards, a set of cards with no, uh, no images, no uh, nothing, and you start off by having a pack of all the operations, if you want to just do addition, subtraction, and with the, with the cards, and say, okay, pick two cards and pick an operation card. This is fun. This could be done individually. If they're in pairs, you could do like the, the war game. Like you take half a pack, I take half a pack and there's a sign. So we're practicing addition. So we're gonna add our numbers that we're gonna pull. So again, it's a game, but you're practicing fluidity of like operations. And then you move it up, use the colors as the signs, right? Red is negative, uh, black is positive. And now every time I have a, a red card, now I'm adding a sign to it. Right. So I'm practicing the sign law. Right. And then eventually adding the variables by adding the pictures and say, well, if if any um, Jack is an X, all the, the queens are, are Y and all the kings are Z's. Now, let's see if I pull like a bunch of cards, what do I get? And they're able to transfer it from a game into like writing equations. And then from there, we could add the concept of like term. Do they have same variable, some exponents? So those guys get together, those, you know? So you're building on something they're kind of concretely understanding and you're building something very abstract. So this is something I did and it worked wonderfully, but you have to kind of beginning to end, like continue building on what you started. I found this very, very efficient. 
Another area I found really challenging is direct and indirect relationship. It's like, they don't get it. What is reciprocal and stuff? So I started with something they do. You take their context. Okay, the more I shop, the less money I have. So what's happening? It's direct. You know, you start off with stuff like that. And eventually if X is, then Y is, then therefore, then you start using graphs and, and stuff, right? So again, these are all ideas on how you could build it up. And my whole uh, thing is completely off. Another one, which is super interesting is to present a, a, a rational number in as many ways as possible, right? So you play a game with them, say, okay, show me how many ways you can do this. They'll have to really think. And what you're doing is just, you're, you're showing them different strategy to actually display, you know, display whatever um, you want them to display, to think differently and to actually share. But this, they could come to you and say, okay, uh, let's say, I don't know, Jessica found two ways. Anybody found more? Oh, I found three. Okay, let me see yours. So that becomes a bit of an interactive. And this is many way of, uh, of, of, you know, of like expanding their way, the flexibility of thinking in math, you know? But again, through a game. I love the truth and dare. This is something that worked wonderfully is the truth part is you give them actually abstract, like concept. Is this true? These are all generalization. Then you want them to say, is it true or false? But in the dare part, this is where you go into the higher thinking part where you solve, analyze, justify, create. That really is like, okay, show me how, you know, um, why is this wrong? Is this value correct? You know, so that's the part where they're getting tested on, evaluated on the exam is the communication of their thoughts, right? So if you don't practice that enough during class, it's gonna be really hard to see it the first time on a pretest and an exam. So this has to be from day one, personally, I think. And that's the lack of problem. This is what I find that they're lacking is they don't practice enough type of exam questions early on. Uh, another one is I take the, each other's work, I take out the names and say, why is this wrong? Or I intentionally create a solution with problems in it. And I say, well, where did I go wrong? And if you find it, you get a candy or something, you know, mm -hmm. some sort of incentive, right? Mm -hmm. So this is, this is fun stuff. Again, matching games and stuff. The fun part now, thanks to Tracy, she had inspired me to do like homemade uh, virtual manipulative. And those guys, I found like you could use whatever you want and the way you want. It's literally like manipulative that you could actually decide to put, you put your question up here and they use like these manipulative the way you want to use them, right? So this could be sent. It's, uh, it's uh, like PowerPoint is not complicated at all. So it's just like you put a question, you put whatever, and you just drag things around for them to play with. Um, so I thought sometimes stuff like that, especially the number line, it's super interesting. You know, it's low tech. It doesn't take a lot of programming and stuff. And this, all you have to do is you keep on dragging like stuff around, right? So this is for you to use whenever you want. Um, also here, I love the part of arithmetic. And this is the part where I want to build a library. And this is games or templates. So let's say, for example, if you take a look at this one here, I'll show you. This one, it's exactly like the PowerPoint one, except this is online, you know? So you could do a lot more in terms of spacing. You could make it spaced out, spaced in. You could put negative numbers, like let's say, I don't know, minus 10. Uh, and then it'll start from minus 10 to whatever. So you decide whatever you want. You want it by jump, you want it by not by one, you want it, you could you wanna you could even have your own calculators showed up. So you have all the tools already there for you. You know, this you could use it in support to a sheet, a worksheet, or you could use it as like you, you, you know, your own uh, insert in your own PowerPoint, whatever you know you want to teach them. So yeah. these are all all stuff and games and stuff, you know, that can you. You can use tiles, uh, place value, oh, fraction cool. fiddles, lots of lots of stuff. FET simulations, those are cool. This is super, super fun. My kids love, because I test it on my kids, <laughs> even though they're teenagers, but they get tested, right? So stuff like that, you know? Uh, you know, I have zero over zero, but now when I put one, what happened? 
one over one is two over two and no, notice the line. So stuff like that. So if I put, you know, you could uh, play with all of these. So this gives you like, you want more, what happened if you keep on dividing it, right? Sure. So stuff like that, those are like ageless, personally I find, and there's games to that. The fun part, you have Jeopardy, of course. Oh, cool. You know, Jeopardy is fun. Recall activities, you know, GeoGebra, if you're interested in this, this is actually something that we're moving towards. It's used a lot in France in education. GeoGebra is super interesting as uh, again, a, a way of, of exploring math. Algebra, I have lots of lots of stuff here. Jamboard, this is Jessica's, thanks to Jessica. Uh, money, an interesting website. These kind of are games or videos. Like I, um, I love like videos that sometimes you, you may explain it, but I always support it with a video. So maybe somebody else explain it, the same concept. Maybe they'll get it one way or another. So. This is like a live tool. I'm gonna post it on the um, age, um, age website. And I don't know if you're familiar with the age website, which is this one over here. Uh, hold on. The age uh, website is also where it's English resources for the English community across the province. And what it is, is when let's say the CCBE is being built. So you're gonna, it's gonna come. It's all the courses that we offer Okay, it's it's not available 100% yet, but if you take a look at, for example, the um, um, the the uh, the higher one, the sec three, sec four, and sec five. If you click to any one, let's say for example this one, you'll have the DED topic at a glimpse, complex task, uh, pretest, uh, teacher contribution, video list, and if let's say for example I'll show you like pretest, there's a password protected, and what it is is like when you click on this, you have pretest that's provided across the other teachers that they did in their class and they're providing to share with everybody across the province so uh this is this is an like this is a whole resource uh if you ever need it what's the what's the name of the web um the website it's yeah. um it's called H -E. um age age resources age adult general education resources so and you have access to sciences and everything else so awesome. I this is all the resources that I have available for you guys. And if you want to share other resources, if you have other things that you want to share across. So this gives you at least, um, you know, access to something. Okay. As a, as a starting point. Michelin, well, since you have mentioned it, uh, because the format of the website is different from before. So if I want to add things, do you want me to put it in the teacher's contribution or just email you? Okay, no, I'm gonna, uh, thank you for mentioning it. Actually, let me share the screen again. What we did that is a bit different, go to this resources, time. let's say if I go to the DBE section and you wanna give me, um, let's go for math, okay? Again, since we're in math. If let's say you wanna go to sec three and you wanna share a pretest. If you go to pretest, we just added a folder of sharing pretest, which is somewhere. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. It wasn't there. <laughs> I guess it was added to the CCBE. She forgot to add it for the DBE, but it will be a folder here somewhere. It's read share pretest. And that one, if you have your own personal pretest, you want to put it, this is a this is password protected, right? You don't want to burn your pretest. So you could put it here. But if you want to share, like if you go out and if you want to go to, um, like you said, um, uh, share with teacher here, like teacher contribution. If you go here, here you could you could share all the uh, like let's say activities, lesson plans, videos, whatever you want, anything that it does not falls under pretest. Everything else you could put it up here as you wish. Uh, but the minute you want to share a pretest. Either send it to me by email, but I promise, thank you, I took note of it. I'm gonna ask the, the programmer to add a folder for, for teacher contribution for pretest in the pretest section. Okay, so this is this is super cool because a lot of teachers send this across, you know, uh, across the province. And, and Jessica was a, an important 
part of it. She played a lot of, she, she shared a lot, which is, we're very thankful for. But if you notice here, like you have some people send like articles, some people send like uh, uh, just uh, games, uh, activities, uh, stuff that it's ready to use. You could take it and work with it, like something like that. This is super cool. You know, you could just take and play, you know, plug and play type of thing. You know, um, nice. Yeah. So this is this is a lot of resources, like practices, like the the review of books. Uh, uh, but this is this and, is all teachers all over the place. And that's on the AGE. Um, yes. Yeah. And under what tab? Sorry. Um, this one is under. Uh, hold on. Like hidden now. documents. Uh, no, 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 no okay, I'm joking. Okay. I don't, <laughs> I don't believe in hiding anything. It's in teacher contribution. Okay. Teacher contribution. Yeah. Cool. In the video list playlist, this is teachers again, sharing. I start putting up some, but I did not have, uh, you know, uh, I didn't finish though. So sec five, like proves made easy. Like, you know, depending on the field that you're in, like sec three, you have all these videos, sec four probability goes by like, you know, topics, area, volume, wow. whatever. Cool. So, and this is like, again, a library of video. If you don't have to take them. If you find one, you could add it. And, and adding it is super easy. It's just, there's a plus sign. You put it on and, and just add the, the, like, you know, the plus you click it. All you have to do is title and click the link and that's it. That's all. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's great. Wow. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff uh, that uh, we put time for to do because we know, and, and this is an interesting one, a complex task option. This takes you to the class and it gives you like access in Desmos activity complex tasks. And if you don't use Desmos, you just go to complex tasks and you have a million complex uh, problem with solutions for you to use. Mm. So uh, this is really, really neat. And this is a lot of them are like either translated. Some of them are written. Some of them, you know, looks like the evolution of man right there. There. That's right. <laughs> national track team <laughs> such running <event. laughs> but what i find interesting if you especially for like math teachers personally this is what i love is when you have the whole course on a on a one page you nice. know i'll show you this one this one um, i don't remember who who sonia oops yeah, Sonia had actually found it or actually built it. What it is, is like the whole course literally on a one page. So this is a nice, an overview for teachers to look at and say, okay, this is what I have to do. It's great. You know, and this is really their cheat sheet. <laughs> if you want to be honest, you can't give it to them, but this is hopefully what they're supposed to get at. You know what I mean? Logically, you know, so uh, these are all stuff, um, I'll stop sharing my screen. You know, you could uh, use and, and, and uh, play with. And cool. if it makes your life easier, be my, be my guest. That's, okay. uh, that's why the whole idea is there. Thank you, Michelin, that's great. Uh, one last question maybe I would like to ask if you don't mind me, Nicole. Is no, there right. anything, anything that you would guys like a workshop on or anything that you want us to do a focus group on or something that we could like maybe help you with because this is you know it will probably be more useful to get some feedback on that well the one thing that i think um i've taken away from today would be you know like a, i guess you can do it on the jam board but if i don't have a touch screen um, like just literally to have an interactive screen that the other student could see at the other end, you know, like, like effectively like a, like a, um, uh, a whiteboard or, a, you know, that, that type of thing would really help. I think for math, that's for sure. Yeah. Okay. Woody, I, I, I am aware of at least three or actually four, four tied up type of interactive whiteboard. Some support video, some support copy paste or pictures, some support like rulers so you'd be able to draw straight lines. They're all yep. different. Right. Um, I know the school, the new, as far as I know, the new laptop on the school does not, does not have a touch screen. That was the discussions uh, last time we have a 
okay. start meeting, but the school does have iPad. Okay. So it, it, it but I just have to warn you though, it does taking uh, like uh, Michelin's, uh, no, actually don't, for, I forgot who said that. Each of the app look slightly different from a laptop to an iPad and some of the function disappear. Mm -hmm. So very often I will have the same thing open in multiple thing just so I can interact with them the same the way I want to. So it does take some getting used to, but if you let me know what you are what you want to do, then I can point you to the uh, the app. Usually free because I'm only doing I'm only doing free. Um, um that will best suit your need. I yeah. totally agree with you, Jessica, when you say you it's best to try on multiple like platforms because the last thing you want is that you plan this activity and then your student says, Well, it doesn't look like that. I don't know what it is, and then you you, you can't help them and then it falls apart because not because of a misunderstanding of the concept, but miscommunication or the platform yeah. is not appropriate. Yeah, and Chromebook looks mixed up, look really weird sometimes. <laughs> that that's why I used to use like you. So you remember Jessica when you said I had all these like tools open? I used to do that. I used to do that. I used to have my phone, my computer, my iPad, all to display the same presentation, even for the PowerPoint. You know, sometimes even, you know, so that's why when I, I use Remind and Seesaw, those are two tools I used across and it worked nicely, you know. Yeah, sometimes the third app, uh, third party app work best because then they are designed to work across platform versus yeah. if you have Google, then work best with Google and Microsoft work with Microsoft because, and also Michelin, the, the reason why your Microsoft work stuff get moved mm -hmm. around in Google Docs is because Google doesn't like Microsoft. That's it. So yeah, there you go. That's true because you're right. When I presented it in another in another presentation, I used Team and it worked nicely. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and, and here it's like, I don't know, it was the same yeah. presentation. That's why I was telling Richard, like, no, PDF is the best. PDF is, uh, I always send stuff to PDF just so also people can't uh, edit it in a sense. And also it will always look the same across mm -hmm. platform and actually uh microsoft they have a new thing um that actually work they will automatically adjust for phone as well so if you have a document present i forgot i sweep swap something like that <laughs> yeah i'll take a look <laughs> at that thank you. Um, <laughs> I, i've created it um but it basically lets you create a document and it will automatically adjust the picture, the, the content to fit whatever screen. Oh, that's super cool. Yeah. I don't like really. to yeah. Sweep, swap. Okay. I'm going to. No, no. Uh, it's called <laughs> sway, 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 sway. <laughs> okay. I'm a, we'll get it. <laughs> yeah. That's sorry. Great. Sway. <laughs> Not fan sway. <laughs> Not fan no, sway. No. <laughs> <laughs> fan yeah. Yeah. So, so and, and this is free if you have just a Microsoft email account. So go to get yourself Hotmail. Yeah, I just I just saw I, I, when I saw the name. It's part of the the Office three sixty five. Mm -hmm. Part of the yeah, but the our school board doesn't uh, not. I shouldn't say our school board. Our school doesn't have Microsoft three sixty five. That's true. But it, just with your Outlook email, it works. Um. Yes. Well, sorry, it does. Like I. Just with my Hotmail account, I don't have access to everything okay. that you would have in Microsoft 365. For example, I don't have access to Teams. Mm -hmm. And I have limited access to Microsoft Whiteboard, but I still have access. Okay. I would definitely check it out. That's Thank way. Thank you so much. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I, I created a, for another purpose, I created a kind of introduction. Mm -hmm. Well, on mm -hmm. Sway, because then if they're clicking on anywhere, it's the first experience and it will always look pretty. Ah. <laughs> no matter what, what, uh, where they open it. I love it. Thank you. Yeah. Maybe I'll Thank do that you. now, fix it. <laughs> yeah. Well, what I did just now, uh, Micheline, I put it, I, I created a PDF and I put, I posted it in the chat, but 
we'll send you the proper links and the proper documents to add. So, well, thank you, Woody. Thanks, Jessica, again. Thank you, Micheline. And of course, Pleasure. Uh, Thanks very much, guys. It was awesome. Yeah. It was so it was nice seeing you all. Yeah. All right. So take good care. Bye. Have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye-bye.